home, Messianic congregation. Here we have Jews and Gentiles worshiping together because we're in agreement on the, uh, that we are a two testament congregation. That means we believe in the old covenant, uh, known to the Jewish people as the Tanakh, uh, and, uh, and, the new and the new covenant, known as the Brit Kadashah. For a long time, they were thought of as two separate books with two separate messages. However, people who, in who investigate uh, will find that there are no new concepts, no, none, zero, there are no new concepts in the New Testament. Every precept is mentioned somewhere in the Old Testament. As a matter of fact, it, is it was primarily written to tell what happened, but it also is a commentary on the Old Testament to explain the Old Testament. So if you read the, if you read the Old Testament uh, for its uh, history, that's, that's very educational to know, to know the history of what took place and uh, why are there Jewish people here, how do we get here, et cetera, et cetera, how, 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 did, how did this religion, Christianity, get started? That's all very educational. But um, there's something else going on. There are spiritual issues. You see, in the Old Testament, it also speaks about that there is an eternal world out there. It's out in an invisible realm. And, and there are certain dynamics as to how it works. Now, these are very mysterious, very mysterious. And so uh, a lot of people just don't want to know about it because it's like, how can you possibly know the answer? Well, those people who have taken the time to consider uh, the Messiahship of Yeshua, Jesus, or Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, Yeshua equals Jesus, the meaning of that word is salvation. He is salvation. And when it says Chris, uh, uh, Christ or a Christian, that's of, of Christ. Messianic means of Messiah. What does Christ mean? It means the anointed one. Okay. That's what Messianic means, the anointed one. So, so as a believer, I am one with the anointed one. So that's why we meet together. This weekend, we have a special time uh, because it is Israel's, I think it's Monday, is Israel's 70th anniversary. So it's, uh, there's a lot of celebrations that are going on uh, in Israel. There are also celebrations going on in this country. So uh, it's uh, kind of interesting to think about the, uh, the long expanse of time. And that is, um, think about it. We have the Jewish people, always been a people, we're just a people in dispersion. But what happened in 70 AD? The Romans came in and destroyed the temple. Daniel says whoever the Messiah is gonna be has to be born before the destruction of the second temple. So that happened. When that occurred, it, the rabbi said, what can we do? The, uh, our whole sacrificial system doesn't work anymore. We, we, what are we going to do? We have a sin problem, and, and, and how do we make atonement? And, of course, the believers in Yeshua said, well, listen, that's all been fulfilled. But the rabbis really couldn't accept that, so they went off and, and uh, codified a lot of regulations of what to do until the temple could be rebuilt. And that became rabbinical Judaism. In a sense, biblical Judaism died. Biblical Judaism died and was replaced by rabbinical Judaism. The Talmud, the Mishnah, etc. So biblical Judaism died and was replaced by rabbinical Judaism because they thought it would be 5, 10, 20 years until there was a new temple. But it, here's, so over a period of many centuries, rabbinical Judaism killed off biblical Judaism. And that went on for a couple of thousand years. Hmm? A day is unto the Lord as a thousand years, a thousand years is unto a day. For 2,000 years, or possibly you could say two days, very long days, there was uh, the death and burial of 
biblical Judaism. Spiritually, Jewish people, in a sense, died. Our spiritual connection died. We were into rabbinism, man-made rules. And now what happened? In 1948, something happened with the Jewish people. Israel is kind of a resurrection of the Jewish people. There is a resurrection that has gone on and is still going on. And it parallels what took place 2,000 years ago in, in, the, in the scriptures. So it is that uh, if you want to consider that, that, that there was a death, burial, and resurrection on the third thousand years, the third day, you might consider that possibility, a death, burial, and resurrection of the Jewish people on a peoplehood level, on a, a material level. But as we're fond of saying here, things that happen on the material level have a spiritual counterpart, the physical material events foretell of how the spiritual world works out there. So in 1948 culminated into an actual beginning of a resurrection of the Jewish people. But in 1967 began a resurrection on a spiritual level, something parallel with the physical resurrection of the Jewish people, and that was the coming of the Messianic movement. People ask the Apostle Paul, I'm getting, I'm getting started here, I'm, I don't know where I'm going to end. People uh, in Romans chapter 11 said, well, why, why, why are the Jewish people, why is it so hard to get through to them? And he says, well, <laughs> take it easy. Blindness in part has happened to the Jewish people until, until the fullness of the Gentiles comes in. When is that? Well, it's only mentioned one other time, and that's in Luke 21, 24 that says that Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the nations, the Gentiles, until the time of the nations is fulfilled. That occurred in 1967 for the first time in 2,000 years. Jerusalem was no longer trodden down of the nations. So, you could take though and say blindness in part has happened to Jewish people until Jerusalem is taken back. Or you could say, Blindness in, in part has happened to the Jewish people until 1967. And that is commonly thought of as the beginning date of the spiritual resurrection of the Jewish people that parallels the physical resurrection of the land of Israel, the real estate. And that... So we have a physical... We have a... I'm giving a whole sermon here, I don't care. Okay, so, so we, ha we have something here that ha operates on more than one level. You know, there was, uh, in the time of the Holocaust, one-third of the Jewish people were wiped out. Hmm? Well, isn't it interesting that Yeshua, like us, is made of a body, uh, a, a, a mind, an intellect, and then, and then a spiritual uh, apparatus that we all, we all have. But one-third was cut off. The body was cut off. The physical was cut off. And so it was that one-third of the Jewish people physically were cut off. So we have all these parallels going on, the physical and the spiritual, and then we have it, and, and, and it happens to the Jewish people first. That's why it says to go to the Jewish people first. It isn't that they're better. It's just that that's God's modus operandi. That's his pattern. He does things to the Jewish people first. So, it's, to me, it's not unreasonable to speculate to myself and say, that which pay attention to that which happens to the Jewish people, that's the canary in the coal mine. What happens to the Jewish people is eventually going to happen to the world at large. Huh? So what's going to happen is, if we take a look at what happened to the Jewish people, first on a physical level, then on a spiritual level, would it be unreasonable to speculate that that's what's going to happen to the world at large. One-third of the trees are going to get cut off. One-third of the water is going to get cut off. One-third of everything is going to get cut off physically. Huh? And there's going to be a worldwide <laughs> holocaust, a tragedy. But out of the tragedy will come newness of life as it happened, as it happened to Yeshua, as it happened to Israel. 
That's going to happen. There will be calamity on the face of the earth, but out of it, out of it will come a new heaven and a new earth, a whole new setup. Huh? And that's, and that, so let's pay attention to what happens to Israel. That's what's going to happen for the world at large. It's all a great big prophecy. That's why God kept the Jewish people in existence as a prophecy to tell the world what's going to happen if we're paying attention. And here is where we get to see it up close because we are early participants in the spiritual resurrection of the Jewish people. So when we're celebrating on Monday the physical resurrection of the Jewish people, let us keep in mind these other patterns of spiritual resurrection and that, and that the whole process of the Jewish people and, uh, and the history, especially the recent history, is prophetic as to what's going to happen to the world at large. That's a long welcome. It's a long welcome. I tell you, I, I, it, it, it seems so clear and so obvious. And you say, why wouldn't everybody want to know of these, of these possibilities, these things? You know why? Because it, it's inconvenient to get up on Saturday morning. So, but, but to us, we find these things very interesting, very interesting because we feel like we're in on a ground floor operation of something meaningful that's happening in our lifetimes. We're in the middle of the middle of a ground floor operation. Okay, enough. Enough. Let's uh, call